What's up guys and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at spawners and harvesting and some other interactive uh, blueprints. So we're going to start with simple spawners. Uh, we, uh, If you go to action RPG here, other blueprints and then random spawner, we have a BP random spawner. So that's what we're gonna be starting with right now. So this can spawn something randomly in the world. So if I drag it here, and what I can do here is I can go to the details panel and uh, right here, I can change the spawner condition to begin play, then destroy. We're going to simply add like a random spawner that spawns something when the game starts. And possible spawn pickups here, we can uh, click on the plus sign here. And for example, we can say, uh, let's try to spawn that Omega sword. So Omega sword, um, this uh, set to, to spawn any, uh, any actor in general. So uh, this should work with anything that you have in your project. So in this case, we're going to indicate that we want to uh, spawn the pickup version of our Omega Sword here. So BP two-handed Omega Sword, which is, of course, this one right here. We can manually place it on the world, but in this case, we want to use the spawner to spawn it maybe uh, sometimes. Um, so this is uh, the uh, blueprint that we want to spawn. It's going to be min and max one because it's a uh, it's a weapon. Uh, the spawn chance here, we're going to do maybe uh maybe 50 percent and roll times we're going to only roll once and uh here is of course the spawn condition is begin play then destroy uh so we just these settings right here we can go ahead and play and this time we did not roll that spawner and this time once again we failed and of course this time it spawned the uh, weapon let's go and add another uh, weapon here for example so uh i can go to the possible spawn pickups click on the plus sign there and maybe add uh, a hammer uh, in this case so it's going to be the two-handed hammer make sure you spawn the pickup version and not the equipment version uh, and also we will do a 50 percent chance there as well and only roll once these settings right here can be used uh, for harvesting and other type of interactables uh, but for now this is a simple spawner that spawns something when the game starts um, so here we can also apply an impulse uh, to the spawned item uh, so let's go ahead and enable that and we can apply it like a, an X and Y impulse for example 100 there and maybe 200 to the Z uh, Max items to spawn. This is where you indicate how many items uh, Can be spawned in this case. We only want one item to be spawned So because we could actually roll both of these items, but we only want one of them to spawn So if I play here this time, we didn't roll anything uh, But this time the uh, big hammer was spawned there so this is your uh, normal uh, spawner, of course, a simple spawner that spawns something when the game starts. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, BP child harvest object. And by the way, you can always uh, right click here, create a child and maybe some specific setups that you can simply place on the world. Or you can go the lazy way and just drag here and change the uh, settings inside the de details panel. And our example here, we're going to um, work with this one, uh, go to the details panel here show name widget is the name that uh, appears above the object uh here we're going to name it for example spawner why not or harvesting or whatever this is the name or the color of the name here so if i go ahead and play here uh, and get closer as you can see that's the spawner and that's the color uh, that we indicated here for example i can do blue there or something like that and that will change the color um, these are the possible spawns this is exactly the same setting that we uh, saw with the normal spawner. Uh, let's actually go ahead and spawn a green gem. And the spawn chance here is going to be 100%. So every time we want to spawn this item whenever we interact with this blueprint. Um, and of course, the uh, spawner condition here is going to be interact. So we're going to interact with the item or this uh, object right here, and then it will destroy itself. Other interaction types are on interact and keep alive. So it spawns whatever it has, but it stays alive. So if you have something that you wanna keep in the world, you can use this, for example, some kind of barrel or a box that you, you don't wanna destroy necessarily. We can indicate the random spawn distance here, uh, maybe something like 100 there. And once again, the impulse here is just to add some flavor to the animation of the uh, looted items. Uh, respawn time here. This is where if you want to uh, respawn the item when when you loot it here XP earned is of course how much XP you earn from looting this item Required duration for interaction. This is how long you need to hold the interaction key Before you can interact with the object for now if we go ahead and play we uh, need to click on the item And then it will spawn something so as you can see we got five 
uh, uh, XP there and it did spawn the item. In this case, it's not going to respawn because we didn't indicate any respawn time. But we got some XP there as indicated right here. We can indicate, for example, that between 5 to maybe 10 seconds, this uh, item respawns when we loot it. So I can go right here, click on the item, get the gem. And of course, after 5 to 10 seconds, roughly, it's going to respawn once again. As you can see there, it will respawn. And I can loot it again. It's going to give me the same thing. Or we can add some random items. Right now, I'm blocking the spawn so it will not respawn. But it will keep trying until I move away and then it will spawn at some point, as you can see there. For the duration here, uh, let's say that it, it takes maybe two seconds for us to interact with this object. And this just means that I have to hold the interaction key. As you can see, I can cancel it at any time, uh, but I have to hold the left mouse button here in this case for two seconds, then it spawns the item there. Or of course, in third person mode, it would be like the E key or F key based on your settings. So spawn condition, once again, these are pretty straightforward. I can, so begin play, keep alive is just going to basically spawn the item and stay alive and uh, this on interact and keep alive is the same as before where i can interact with it for like two seconds and then what it's going to do is going to spawn the item but stay alive and of course if i interact with it again it's not going to spawn anything because it already spawned the item and finally the uh, on health depleted we have two uh settings here on health depleted then destroy so this one just means that you need to destroy it so in this case i actually have to damage the item in order to loot it so Go ahead and, and do that. As you can see, it gets looted once I uh, damage it. And of course, the health of the item uh, is also indicated here. So it says health is one and max damage per hit is one. So if I actually do three here as health and max damage per hit is one. So this this means that I have to hit it like three times before I can uh, before it drops or gets destroyed and drops whatever it has. So I actually have to hit it three times in this case. So that would be one two and three and then it of course um drops whatever it has um and the other one of course it's similar it's just that when uh, you hit it like three times it will instead of being destroyed it will actually stay alive finally this is a interactive door it doesn't have to be necessarily a door it can be anything that like rotates or changes location when inter interacted with um so what we can do here is we can either duplicate this blueprint and add our custom uh, logic there or change the appearance etc or we can uh, create a child um, so in this case we're going to go ahead and simply drag this uh, over there so what you want to do here first is go uh, open the uh, blueprint and select your meshes there however many you have and of course indicate whether these meshes uh, affect the navigation so in our case here it's set to false which is what we want um, and then what you want to do here is you want to go back here, go to the details panel, either do it from the details panel or inside the blueprint itself in the settings right here. So we have the on interact at transform. So when we interact with this uh, door or, or actor in general, so this is the transform that's going to be applied in the execution time. So what you want to do here is select the uh, item here and go to the details panel. And we have here some settings that we can play around with. So the most important uh, setting here is this on uh, interact add to transform. So when we interact with this door, um, in this case, we do minus 400 from the Z location. So what's going to happen is that the door is going to go down when we interact with it. So and if I click on the door, it's going to go down there. And some other settings here, for example, we can instead of going uh, down here, we can maybe rotate the Z here, for example, 90 degrees. So if I interact with this door, it should rotate 90 degrees as you can see there. Also the execution time is just how long it takes for that for this transform to be applied and some other settings such as uh, whether you wanna uh, show or hide the widget here, um, change the widget name, uh, in this case boss room, and uh, if the door is open by default and if you should only interact with this once. So some doors can only be opened once and they cannot be, uh, of course, closed or opened again. Um, so some other settings here that you can uh, play around with in terms of the uh, spawner here is, for example, uh, if we place this right here, I can go open the blueprint there. And what I can do here is I have a function called uh, get outline color. So I can override this function right here and I can maybe select green, for example. 
And what's gonna do? Uh, what's gonna happen here is that if I hover over the object, as you can see, the outline is now green. And uh, another setting here is called get acceptable distance. And if I set this to a thousand, then that means I can interact with the object from a far distance. For example, from here, as you can see, there you go. And of course, the uh, XP given is from uh, is already set here inside the settings. So I think that's pretty much it for this uh, tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Um, don't forget to watch the other videos to learn more about the system. So until then, thank you for watching. Stay safe. See you later. Goodbye.